All right, so the summer between my sophomore and junior year of college, after 20 years of doing everything my mother told me, being a straight A student, National Honor Society, and being, in fact, the president of a science fiction club at my high school. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Usually it was just a punch, but I like that. Nice. All right. Um, I developed what you might call a uh, bit of a drug problem. I got really big into DXM tripping. Uh, DXM is a disassociative drug. It's an active ingredient in a lot of cough medicines. If you drink a bottle of Robitussin, you will see the galaxy. I can guarantee that, all right? And uh, I didn't quite do that. I used something called Corsetin, which is a cough suppressant pill. Comes in a box of 16. On the package, it says, take no more than four per day, no closer than four hours together. And uh, over that summer, uh, I did it a lot, quite a bit, and I had some really great experiences. Uh, I saw David Bowie. Um, I met myself as an old man on the beach, all right? It was crazy. <laughs> a lot of great times. But over that summer, it became quickly my main thing where uh, I was doing the entire box, just taking 16 at once, all right? And it came to a point uh, where my friends had to get involved because we're at a Bickford's, 24-hour Bickford's, which if you're from Massachusetts and you're not uh, had, able to drink yet, that's where you go. And I was there, and I just stopped the conversation. And I said to everybody, like, hey, wouldn't it be awesome if you could just lie down in a big room all day, night, all day long and all night long, and no one would bother you? and you could just get high all the time. And my friends were like, oh, he has a problem. All right, yeah, so let's take, you know, let's <laughs> take care of that. So this is how it came about. Uh, I was working a summer job at that point, and I had a shift four to nine in a pharmacy doing a cashier thing. Uh, but that afternoon, my buddy Mark calls me, real quick conversation. He's like, hey, Wes, what are you up to tonight? Nothing much, going to work in a couple hours. Cool, thanks, bye. Like, that's kind of weird, very short conversation, whatever. <laughs> Put it in the back of my mind. Go to work, I'm getting off at 9, about 8.45, my mother calls the store. Not even my cell phone calls the store and says, hey, Wes, we got to talk. I'm going to come pick you up from work. Serious, we got to have a conversation. I'm like, all right, that's random, kind of weird. She picks me up and she's like, all right, I got to let you know, Mark came by the house today, told me what's going on. I went down to your bedroom, I found that backpack on your bed with 18 empty core seating boxes in it. We have to talk, all right? This can't go on. I'm not judging you. We need to figure out what's going on, but this can't go on. I just need to have a conversation with you. I want to take you to dinner. So we go to dinner. Waiter brings the water. And immediately after that happened, I ran out of the restaurant and ran two miles to the condominium where Mark lived because I was going to kill that dude. Yeah, all right. So <laughs> murder is in my mind. I've never felt more betrayed in my entire life. There's no question I am going to murder this boy. That's how it has to end, all right? So I get there, and it's about 10.30 at night and uh, he's not home yet, so I wait in the bushes, all right? Um, and a lot of people say that, oh, wait in the bushes, like euphemistically, like, I was just hiding. No, I'm in shrubs, all right? <laughs> there are leaves around my face, all right? I'm going to kill this kid, all right? Uh, and this also is kind of a story about the power of Jesus because he eventually walks up the lane. I've been waiting two hours. It's past midnight. He comes up the drive, and I jump out. I'm like, Mark! And he sees me, and he's just like, Jesus Christ! And he just starts running away. <laughs> now, Mark is Jewish, all right? <laughs> and in his time of need, he called on Jesus Christ. <laughs> Pretty strong evidence for him being the one true Lord, just saying, all right? So whatever. <laughs> so I start chasing him, and I'm running after him, and I'm in horrible shape. After about 20 seconds, I'm completely gassed. I got nothing left in the tank. He gets away. I'm like, ugh, all right, I just, fine, fine, whatever. I can't kill this kid. I'm going to mess up his car. So I grab the biggest rock I can find, and I'm looking for his car because I'm going to put a rock through the windshield. And it's a condominium. I don't know where he parks. People park out of different places. So I'm walking around. Now, it never occurred to me that Mark would call the cops. It did not, legitimately did not cross my mind. I'm like, we're friends. He's going to run away, double back, go to his house. We'll end up at Bigfoot's tomorrow. Everything's cool. Whatever. No. <laughs> Not the case. He, in fact, did call the cops. And uh, the cops were looking for me. So I'm out there, and a cop rolls up on me. He's like, uh, what's your name, son? Now, keep in mind, straight A student, National Honor Society, sci-fi club. I've never been in trouble at all. I'm not afraid. I'm not worried about this. I'm not thinking he's looking for me. This is 10 years before Ferguson. I am not afraid of cops, all right? Like, <laughs> not at all, all right? He comes up on me, like, what's your name? I'm like, Shh, I'm Wes Hazard. And he just goes to the shoulder radio. He's like, we have that party. I'm like, ah! <laughs> right. 
So he gets me like, all right, what do you, he heard the whole story. He's like, what do you got, are you on drugs, son? What's going on? I'm like, no, whatever it is, I got, what's that rock for? I'm like, rock collecting, what? Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> worst liar ever. And he's like, if I find this kid's car messed up, you're gonna be in big trouble. And I'm like, no, I didn't do anything, I'm fine, whatever. And he's like, all right, son, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna get in, the, gonna get in this car, I'm gonna drive you home, you're not under arrest. I'm just gonna watch you walk into your house, and that's gonna be it. I don't wanna see you out here again. So he did. And it was great, pretty chill reaction, but I gotta say, the uh, entire five minute ride home, he gave me an unending lecture about how if I didn't turn my life around and get off drugs, I was gonna end up, quote, and a uniformed officer of the law told me this, I was gonna end up, quote, sucking dick under a bridge, all right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A policeman told me that, all right? But I gotta say, it's also a story about the power of forgiveness because I didn't talk to Mark for two and a half years and never felt more betrayed, but I'm happy to say that come next September, I will be emceeing Mark's wedding. Thank you guys very much. <laughs>